It's April 24th here in southeastern North Carolina, and for the first time in my life, I'm going to try to grow a watermelon on purpose. Now, I'm renting a house right now, and watermelons need a whole lot of room, so I don't have the luxury of tearing up a large plot of land to grow some watermelon. So, I'm going to harken back to a time uh, much earlier in my life, where I grew up in uh, New Jersey, we didn't have uh, the infrastructure for um, uh, sewer systems. We had septic tanks, and uh, we didn't have a garbage disposal, so a lot of the vegetable refuse that we used, we all had compost piles. We just had um, a big pile in the backyard that we would dump lettuce and watermelon and cantaloupe and pumpkin and tomato guts and wh whatever you, you throw away. Um, and every single year, like clockwork, um, in July, August, when the nights got warm, uh, watermelon plants would just randomly spring up from store-bought watermelon seeds from the year before. And it seemed like it would never yield a good tasting fruit. My guess is because it's some grocery store variety that was hybridized and doesn't grow true to type, so you get some kind of you know, funky thing, but it would always be some kind of melon. You might get a cantaloupe or watermelon that doesn't taste very good, but it was cool to see that that was always like the key plant that would grow out of the compost heap. So I saw this interesting hill method online where people just basically dump some topsoil and a bag of compost in the middle of their yard and then they plant their watermelons in it and I'm thinking to myself, hey, that's a great idea because that's how watermelon would just always grow naturally. So I have these seeds that I got from Southern Exposure Seed Company. This is called a Nancy Watermelon. I started the seedlings a couple of weeks ago and this is what they look like now. And they're to the point now where they're just getting pretty large and I need to do something with them. All right, now I think you can see them pretty well there. But they're really beautiful plants. So I picked this Nancy watermelon because they seemed like they were the middle of the road for everything. They were rated to do well in hot, humid climates. They were a medium-sized watermelon that had a medium amount of time to produce a mature fruit. So um, that's what I wanted. I didn't want little tiny ones that came quick and I didn't want long watermelons that would take forever to produce some massive fruit. So I'm just gonna try this just for the heck of it. I have no idea how it's gonna work out. And here you'll be able to see the, the kind of land that I have to deal with. There are all my tomatoes. And I'm picking this spot. This is the southeastern corner of the yard but it's just beyond the fence, so I won't get shadowing from the fence. So this is pretty much the sunniest part of the entire yard. Now what I do know about watermelon is that they really like warm nights. Tomatoes, you can get away with some dips into the 40s, even the high 30s, um, and it's not really going to hurt the plants. But watermelons, they don't like to see even 50s. And my lows moving forward are pretty much in the 55 to 60 degree range. So within a couple of weeks, we'll start seeing 60 degree nights. And before I know it, the 70 degree nights will be here, I'm sure, once July rolls around. But I think 55 and up is probably a good enough time to put in my early watermelon. And uh, this watermelon, I've been leaving outside for weeks in the greenhouse. So it's, it's seen inside the greenhouse low 40. So I think it's pretty toughened. And uh, we'll see how this works out. This is how I'm going to build my hill. I'm going to put down two 40-pound bags of topsoil with a 50-pound bag of black cow on top of it. And then I'm going to spread the manure um, evenly over the hill and try to get some kind of decent-looking plot that hopefully won't wash away with the heavy rain. And then I'm going to mix some fertilizer in, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that now. I guess this looks like as good a spot as any. I 
I'm going to spread this out into a little hill, an even hill. We have to break up some of the clumps. Okay, that looks about right. And I'm going to take a couple of shovels of some 555 fertilizer. Sprinkle that around. bone meal for the roots, a few tablespoons, try to get some on the dirt and not just on me. Some Epsom salts. By the way, it's about 6 o'clock right now, uh, 6 p.m., and I'm still getting full sun right here. So I should be able to get about 12 hours of full sun here in the end of April. So as May, June progresses, I'm only going to get more. And just a little bit of, what is this? This is sulfate of potash. A little bit because this is 0060 and it's super strong. That was probably less than a tablespoon entirely. And I'm going to break this into the first few inches of soil. And I pick it up and fluff it a little bit. Again, I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm gonna try. It's definitely loamy. And afterwards, I'm gonna to have to water this very well and mat this down. Because I do not want this to erode and move away. Show you what we're looking at now. This basically looks like just a big round mound of dirt. So before I plant my watermelon, I'm going to hose this down um, and I'm going to get this wet so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to bury my watermelon in pre moistened soil. So give me a few minutes and I'll get that done. All right, I have four holes dug, and inside those holes, I put just a little bit more 555 bone meal and Epsom salt. 
I'm just going to mix that up a little bit. Now, my understanding about watermelon is uh, they don't, while they vine out everywhere, their root system is very confined. So, every single thing that, that drives this plant is all going to be bound right here. So, it's going to have to, this root system right here is going to have to support several, you know, 10, 15, 20 pound fruits. That's a lot to ask. So, you really have to keep these things well fertilized. So I have a, a really nice root system on these plants. So I'm going to fluff them up. And I'm going to bury them fairly deep, but not too deep. Now I might be planting too many plants in this one little mound. I don't know. I've never grown watermelon before. This is really just an experiment to see how the type grows. I'm just hedging my bets with multiple plants. I might be crowding them a little bit. Your mileage may vary. Fluff them out. Place them pretty deep. Pat them down firmly. And that should be all there is to it. I think I'm going to put some brick around the edges here to try and hold the soil uh, from escaping. I have a couple of dozen fire brick in the back that the owner of this house just has stacked up for some reason. So I'm going to take full advantage of that and place that to form a ring around here so my soil doesn't wash away. And then it's just going to vine out all over this whole area, assuming everything goes well. And we'll keep an eye on it, we'll see how it does, and I'll do regular check-ins. Um, if you found this video informative and helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like, share, comment. I appreciate you watching.